Well, good morning and welcome to Cup of Faith. Uh, Today is Wednesday, February the 3rd, 2021. I don't know if you've looked outside your window yet, but there's a lot of snow out there. And in about an hour or so, I'm going to walk outside and I'm going to walk up and down my block and my neighbors are going to come out and they're going to wave palm branches at me. Why would they do such a thing? because I'm going to snow blow their sidewalks and they all love me for that. They were so generous at Christmas, they brought me lots of gifts and baking and drinks and uh, very, very kind people. But that's in a little bit. Let me take a moment to tell you about the journey that I'm on. Uh, This is not to draw too much attention to myself. It's not so that you'll feel sorry for me, but I do hope you, you pray for me And maybe one of the things that uh, we can bring out of this is uh, that with with my age, I'm 62 now, I can bring a bit bit of wisdom and perspective to the journeys you might be going on. About a month ago, I mentioned that I'd had a very bad week with a um, sight loss and the death of a sister. Regarding my eye, I don't know if I've updated you, but the sight in it is over 80% gone. I can just see a little sliver of light out of the outside edge of it. And what it has done is it has raised three questions for me. Question number one is, what are the adjustments that I need to make today? Because there, there are adjustments. It's different to see with one eye than two eyes. One of the greatest things is depth perception. I'll have to learn those skills again. The second question is, is what are the implications long term? I'm a contract painter and it is something that I've often said is physical, it is mental, and it also pays well. And the last thing, uh, so as, well, let me process that. Can I continue to do this? Will I have to change how I operate my business? So what are the implications? What else is there to do? The last question is, what are the opportunities? First of all, first question was, uh, what are the adaptations? Second is, what are the implications? Third question, what are the opportunities? Here's what I mean by that. And that is that it has created an opportunity to reinvigorate empathy in me. I have close friends about my age that are going through very difficult medical prognosis. I know something about having a life altering change in your body. And and in some ways it's like going through the stages of death. Well, they are going through those things and I have empathy and that I can relate to them on an emotional level because I feel what they are feeling. It's different and yet it's the same. There will be a lot more opportunities of empathy. So those are the three questions. I've been getting, uh, interestingly yesterday, uh, I have uh, uh, four living sisters and, um, uh, sorry, five, five living sisters. No, four. That's right. One just passed. Um, But uh, two of them, who are not Christians, uh, texted me yesterday to let me know they were praying for me, uh, just out of the blue. And I appreciate that. And a lot of people are praying for me. And it, and it creates this question in me that on one hand I say, well, the ophthalmologist says my eyesight's never coming back, so I've just given up that dream. But other people are saying, we're praying for your sight to restore. How do you balance that? When people want the best for us, and we're not quite so confident that the best for us is going to happen. So let me talk for a few minutes about faith. What does faith look like? And I think that there are three big questions, at least that I have, that bring a clarity about faith. First question is, can we have a faith, a faith belief system without faith? which is confidence. Can we believe things without having confidence in our beliefs? Second question is, can we believe God exists without believing God acts? 
third question, can we have faith in God's historical acts without faith in God who will act in our behalf today? So those are my questions for the moment. Today, for a few moments, let's just talk about authentic, life-altering faith, which I believe is a belief about God and a belief in God because we need him in these precarious times. He's not just a comfort as much as, as important as that is for us, but he is also one who intervenes. Let me give you four thoughts about how to grow faith, how to grow it in our lives and, and thereby changing outcomes. None of us would believe that God wants us to be ruled by fear and worry and doubt. Matter of fact, some of these things God seems to be very angry about. So, the first thing of my four thoughts. First, faith always looks forward to something better. How do we know what our faith is looking like? What's our checkup on our own faith? Does our faith look forward to something better? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 11, uh, chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So we're looking forward in our faith. The second thing is, faith launches us into action. Faith doesn't keep us immobile, it launches us into action. Remember James chapter 2 verse 14? What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can that faith save him? Now, this is not the works that says that whatever I do is going to replace what Christ has done for me. Whatever I do couldn't even be compared to what Christ has done for me. But faith is accompanied by action. Third thing, faith grows as our knowledge grows. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through, uh, the, the message is heard through the word about Christ. Here's a little personal secret about me. For a number of years, I have been reading the one year Bible. Uh, this is how I learn of the character and the acts of God. This is how I learn how God thinks about me. Can I tell you up front? From what I've read from the scriptures, I just happen to believe that God likes me. Because that's the way God is. But it's daily reading. And it's, it's systematic reading. And it's not necessarily just pulling a scripture out randomly for a moment. But when you read through the entire scriptures, it gives you a broad view of of the character of God and his acts and his interaction with us. Here's the fourth thing, the last thing. It's candid, it's honest, I think. Faith doesn't always change the circumstances. Read the book of Hebrews, for example. But it often does change circumstances. Mark 10. I love this story. I'm a little bit in this story. Jesus and his disciples had gone to Jericho, and while they were leaving, a you know, big crowd followed him. And yet, a, there was one notable person, a blind beggar whose name was Bartimaeus. And he was sitting on the side of the road, and he was a beggar. People would, would, would have charity and mercy for him, and they, would, and they would give him money. But I don't think he wanted to live in that, just getting money. So when he heard that Jesus was from Nazareth, he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And a lot of the people told him to stop. Stop making a disturbance. Stop raising your expectations. Stop trying to get Jesus' attention. But he shouted even louder, son of David, have pity on me. And Jesus stopped and he said, and he said come on over. I love that. Jesus notices us and he calls for us to come over to where he is. 
So they called out the blind man and said, <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing here. These people, they're, they're just so typical people. On the one hand, they're telling Jesus, uh, they're telling Bartimaeus to just keep his mouth shut. But now they say, now there is fans. Don't be afraid. Come on, he's calling you. So the man threw off his coat and he jumped up and he ran to Jesus. And Jesus asked this profound question that I think he asks us today with what we face. Physical, emotional, relational, financial, careers. Such a plethora of needs we have. And Jesus asked that question to us today on Wednesday, February the 3rd, 2021. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus knew what he needed. But he wants the man to state the obvious. Master, I want to see. Master, we want to dot, 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 fill in the blanks. So Jesus said, you may go. Your eyes are healed because of your faith. And right away the man could see, and he went down the road with Jesus. As we end for today, bless you. The challenges are big, but God is bigger. There is times of doubt and worry and fear, but I can categorically guarantee you, God likes you. And he's got great things for you. And part of the partnership, part of the journey, is for us to think in terms of faith. Not only a set of beliefs, but belief in this God who acts, who cares, and is invested in us. God bless you today. Cheers. Enjoy your cup of faith.